Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about downburst winds, flash flooding, wildfires, and a cool down for the central and southern U.S. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. What you're looking at here is the overall rainfall anomalies above average for July so far and it's been a very wet July in fact 122 percent above average for the entire United States this graph here down to the right this is anywhere from two three almost a 500 percent above average in the blue shaded area they've received an excessive amount of rainfall you know for the for uh, July standards and especially up here into uh, the, the northeast where they've been uh, seeing a, a lot of heavy rain and they're going to be impacting yet again but you can definitely see there's been sporadic you know greens and blues of just yeah definitely well above average rainfall for this time of year let's take a look at the overall totals for the last 30 days so we're talking the middle of june to the middle of july and here's the chart i mean it goes from the light blue shaded area of just a tenth of an inch for the entire last 30 days out here but you can definitely see as we get into the midsection of the country we start picking up those rainfall totals and then we start getting to these really excessive amounts of 15 upwards to 20 inches along the coast and this white shaded area and up here in the northeast they've got some pinks and uh, darker darker reds where they've impacted with a lot of heavy rain just in the last couple of weeks and there's a lot more to come that's on the way for this week in fact they've already got flash flood watches again for parts of the ohio valley and pennsylvania upstate new york getting along the coast here a lot more heavier rain is going to be pushing into the area as we go into the afternoon hours you know into the evening there's also a small pocket here uh, into southeastern portions of uh, kansas into uh, northern interior of oklahoma they've got a boundary here that's essentially kind of stalling out and that's what's going to be indicative for those very heavy rains as uh, we are still dealing with those excessive heat advisories and heat warnings in uh, idaho as well as montana so as we go through the la the, the rest of the afternoon here is about four or five o'clock and the latest uh, high resolution data as we start heating up in this atmosphere as that boundaries will start kicking in we do start to see isolated discrete supercell thunderstorms and within these isolated supercell discrete thunderstorms you could get some downburst winds and some severe weather as we transition into the late afternoon into the early evening hours and some of these could be picking up some very heavy winds of talking 65 mile per hour those downburst winds and where these where these cells uh, train up tr uh, you know train that's where you can pick up the the, the higher uh you know wind gust so here's the latest uh, storm prediction center and is in, is showing up anywhere from raleigh all the way up to uh, rochester you could be in that zone for that severe weather as that band will uh, move through but really highlighting uh, New York City getting into Philly uh, Baltimore Washington DC as well as uh, New York uh, D New Jersey there that's where you could be more or less in the bullseye or seeing some of those the main impact would be your downburst winds some of the models are kind of depicting some some cells could be a uh, hail producer cells so it's not out of the question you can't see some hail uh, in this area with very excessive rainfall there's that boundary down here that we talked about where the flash flood washes and in the parts of uh, oklahoma city some of those could get rowdy as well mainly again gusty winds with those downburst winds and those those collapsing supercell thunderstorms as they push off to the south but there's also a pocket in the midsection of the country into rapid city getting into portions of cheyenne where they could be picking up some stronger cells uh this afternoon but and not not only they're going to be dealing with the, uh, the the downburst winds in the northeast but there also has a moderate risk for excessive rainfall if you recall it was just monday night i mean this is saturday monday night they had excessive rain in philly those areas picked up easily six inches some parts isolated part picked up 10 inches in parts of the northeast when they were under a moderate excessive rainfall risk and they find themselves 
under that same risk as we go into the evening hours uh, tonight. So yes, this area is gonna get hard later on tonight into parts of uh, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and then around the New York City areas. Again, it's gonna get crushed where you've seen a lot of heavy rain like I showed you just in the last 30 days and especially like the last two weeks. So this is the last thing this area needs, but it's gonna be on the way. So definitely be weather aware as we go into the later in the evening hours into the overnight hours in this zone. So as we transition into uh, tomorrow, you can definitely see this boundary really doesn't go anywhere. We won't probably see the excessive rainfall we're seeing today in the Northeast, but we're still gonna be dealing with those rain showers just kind of hanging around with that boundary just kind of slowly sliding off to the Southeast. And where those thunderstorms uh, out ahead of the boundary, that's where you're gonna find uh, the, the atmosphere is gonna be primed to kind of overturn in the heat of the day. And that's gonna swing further south into Oklahoma, getting into uh, Arkansas, portions of uh, Kentucky here, as well as uh, the Tennessee Valley. And this along the coast is remains active as well from uh, uh, down here into Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, getting into parts of Florida, where the monsoon will continue to remain active as well, as we yet we see another tropical storm probably forming in the Pacific. And that's just gonna be adding uh, the monsoon train uh, to that area. So those monsoon rains just continue pretty much for all of next week as well. So. As we go into Monday, there's that cold front that we've been uh, talking about. This is, at, you know, at a behind this, this is going to bring some chi almost chilly air for July standards, anywhere from 10, 15 upwards to 20 degrees below average temperatures at times. But out ahead of it, they're going to be dealing with some heavier rains start entering uh, North Texas, Dallas, East Texas. So I do expect some very heavy rain setting up on, especially as you go into Monday afternoon when that cold front arrives, go, going into the Monday, Monday evening hours. But there's the boundary. This finally pushes off the coast of uh, the Northeast. So they will get somewhat of a reprieve from the rain, but out ahead of it, to the south, that's where you're gonna be finding your heavier rains and much of the Southeast as we go into uh, Monday. And with that cold front, as it kind of slows down, yes, the, the Weather Prediction Center has already highlighted a slight risk for excessive rainfall in and around uh, North Texas, East Texas, as we go into the day on Monday. So with that slow moving cold front, it is going to bring excessive rainfall uh, totals to that area and right along that right along that zone you could be picking up some marginal risk of he heavier rains and much of the southeast and that'll get into uh, the south carolina as well as uh, north carolina and you can actually see uh, the monsoon not just you know picking on uh, arizona and uh, new mexico now it's actually lifting a little bit further north into uh, Utah as well as uh, Nevada. So those those rains will spread further north uh, as we go through the week with the monsoon. And the main impact, look at these dew points. I mean, you gotta have, uh, you know, the dew points are just basically the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. So when you see, you know, dew points in the, in the 40s and 30s, that's where they'd be getting the, the wildfires and that's where they've been gonna be continuing to get the wildfires out here and a lot of smoke. And a lot of this smoke is actually blowing, gonna be blowing over uh, Montana and that's actually gonna be filtering into parts of the Dakotas and could actually start in, you know, getting some of this smoke into uh, the central US as we go through uh, throughout the week with these wildfires are gonna continue uh, to remain uh, prevalent but where the atmosphere is uh, tapping into with that boundary, that's why we're going to be seeing those heavier rains because we're seeing dew points uh, over 70. So anytime you're looking at 70, that's considered oppressive. And there's an extreme amount of moisture uh, in the atmosphere. So all they need is that clash. And when they get that clash, it kind of rings out the atmosphere like a sponge and it'll just drop those heavier rains. And some of those could be excessive up to two inches per hour at times of the potential with this beset up as we go into the day on uh, Monday. So as we go into Tuesday, man, that cold front just continues uh, to push further south into central Texas. Yeah, we're talking a cold front for Austin in the middle of July. Yeah, that's gonna reach all the way into central Texas and that'll reach into central Louisiana as well with those cooler temperatures 
for July standards, along with those cloudy and uh, that rain around, that'll keep the temperatures well into the 80s uh, all the way down to the south. You can definitely see where the temperatures could lie by the time we get into Tuesday, uh, July the 20th. There's up to the north. There's where the wildfires are and some of that ridge will be spreading well into the 90s and even in the triple digits in Montana. But you can easily find yourself where where you where the cold front is going to be out, out behind it. Yeah, widespread 80s into Kansas and Missouri and Illinois, getting into the Tennessee Valley, even into Oklahoma, Arkansas, even into North Texas. There's 84 in Dallas. I kind of looked. Uh, the record low high for the day on Tuesday is 82 back in 1954. So we're talking, yeah, I mean, it's not out of the question, depending on how many clouds and how much rain you're able to get on Tuesday, that we could be, find find ourselves in Dallas breaking a potential, you know, record high low, something that, you know, they haven't seen in that area Uh you know, for that day in over 50, 60 years. So this is definitely some cooler air and, uh, you know, almost chilly air for July standards. And it will come with a good amount of rain. And so, yes, it just depends on how much uh, rain, if they see any like peaks of sun, obviously that'll bump up the temperature uh, within that time frame. So, but yeah, definitely easily widespread 80s for much of uh, the, the South and Southeast as we go into uh, the day on uh, Tuesday. And that cold front actually will just kind of slow down and almost make it all the way down into Houston down on uh, Wednesday. So we could see a little bit drying out on Wednesday in Dallas, but that'll, that uh, rain will filter into central Texas, getting into parts of Del Rio, uh, San Antonio, getting into the Houston area where that, where that boundary is. That's where that, where the rain is going to fly. And, but, but yeah, we actually find ourselves with more rain uh, for the Northeast as we go through uh, Wednesday, but as we go into Thursday, that cold front just kind of backs up as a warm front. So when it backs up as a warm front, it's going to bring the Gulf moisture back with it, bring those higher dew points back with it. That's also going to bring the rain showers back with it. So again, these areas will be more susceptible to seeing those heavier rains pick back up again into uh, much of Texas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and to Florida where that boundary again sets up. So it continues to remain active in parts of the Ohio Valley into the Northeast as the trough will, uh, as the monsoon flow will remain active as well as even into going into Thursday. There's your rain amounts potentially between now and Thursday. Yeah, some of these areas could easily pick up two to four inches, a good swath and, and uh, parts of uh, the Dallas Worth area getting into East Texas, uh, right along this boundary here where just some of those heavier rainfall uh, totals could lie. But yeah, that's all they, that's the last thing they need is more re excessive rain and in, into the Northeast and they're going to pick it up uh, in a big way. And, and again, along the, uh, the Carolina coast as well as the monsoon will continue uh, to remain active uh, for that region. And then we also find ourselves with some little bit heavier rain, some actually much needed rain trying to reach into uh, South Dakota and even in the parts of North Dakota where this area desperately needs the rain as well because uh, they've been really dry. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Actually, check out the two videos at the end screen here. Uh, the La Nina watch, that'll kind of give you an idea of what may be to come for uh, fall, potentially going into the winter months with now currently under a La Nina watch. And also Hurricane uh, Felicia, uh, watch that video to kind of give you an update on what's happening in the tropics and what might be, might be to come over the next uh, week or two. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.